taking a look at uh, the importance of doing good stakeholder engagement to develop models, but not just that. At the end of the day, so people can buy into selecting futures that uh, we want to sign up and move to. And given that we live in democracies, being able to sign up in a transparent and clear way to something that requires concerted action is obviously important. So we have, we have the panel up here. Um, do we have any questions? Yanali. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the excellent presentations. I just wanted to ask the panel where do they see the European energy modeling in five years' time? Or <laughs> <laughs> ten. Is, is, is this a projection or a for, forecast? <laughs> okay, let's, let's take two or three responses, whoever would like to pick it up. Do you want to grab the microphone? Yes. Um, that's a strange question. <laughs> I cannot really answer. Um, so, what we have seen in the last 25 years, so, so for, for a particular impact assessment modeling, yeah, so I will not talk about energy system modeling here alone. So, we made a tremendous progress yeah, with the result that we can cover more and more of the process in societies and also in the natural environment. That's nice. On the other hand, um, this created more complexity, right? And com to handle complexity is very, very critical and because you need to have an understanding how complexity materializes in the model. Yeah? So whether it creates, for instance, chaos or chaotic behavior. So then, in, in such a case, it's really difficult to make forecasts. And I don't believe that we can forecast everything. We have to rely to some parts or to some extent on stylized facts. Yeah? And on, uh, so that, that, that's, that's a nature, so I guess. Um, and in terms of modeling, I see, so we will increase complexity further, we will include more processes, but we have to, we have also to make some, or we have to step back a little bit, just in order to revise what we have done so far. And if we would have at the end, or if we take the best of both approaches, so the full dynamical approaches as presented in the, in the uh, macroeconomic models, in the integrated assessment models, and uh, yeah, the best of, of approaches like, like the European calculator, for instance, then it could be a good development, I guess. But for sure, I think that we have, so the reason why we're doing the modeling is not the policy advice of law, alone, it is, has also to do, to, uh, yeah, we need to pick up people, yeah? so we have to convince them as well, and, and how should we do that uh, without, of, without having models available? <laughs> okay, do, do we have a, a, another question? Okay. So is that the, the, the last question? Which I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, we'll my question on. is about the uh, ex post uh, verification of broadcasting oh. exercise. Uh, again, this is something that was in the climate community essential to increase the credibility of the models being used. I've heard about backcasting exercise in the energy modeling community since many years, but I have seen, not seen this exercise by the IEA, by others. How come? Why? And why is the community so reluctant to engage in that? I see a lot of semantic discussion about forecasting, projections, and all that. In the end, the policymakers use these tools and the output of these tools to take their decision. It's essential, therefore, whether we like it or not, to look back at 20, 30 years and see which were the systematic errors being done over the time. Why this did not happen so far? Thank you. I think that's a, a, a fantastic question. Maybe two responses and then we'll close off. Yes. Thank you. For, the, for this question, which is very important, I will reverse it. What is going to be the European Union after five years? <laughs> or ten years? And, and this will uh, dictate what is going to be the energy model. Because if the European Union is uh, having a role of, co of negotiation, coordination of national perspectives, then this will have impacts on the, on the model. The one that will be dispersed. If the European Union uh, evolves as a government, as, as a central government, as a true union, then the modeling also will unify and, and, and will follow. So it's a different perspective, I think, that we should have to use. Uh, the, as I said before, we are lacking this uh, uh, retrospective uh, presentation. 
it is a very important point, and we, we have to do. Uh, and um, you know, if if I look back, there is a, a lot of lessons that we can uh, uh, learn from uh, this exercise. And um, I invite uh, the commission to. <laughs> yeah, just, just just one comment on the on, on the future of, of, of models and, and, and trends. I think one um, dimension we have not uh, mentioned yet is the um, research versus the, well, Professor Capers has mentioned it, research versus commercial usage of models. I think this is an important um, aspect, and if you look to um, other um, engineer fields of engineering, for instance. Uh, many models which 30 <coughs> years ago were uh, at the university level are nowadays commercial products. And I think this is a, um, a development not everybody will might like, but uh, in some subsectors of the energy system is taking place that commercial tools are actually being used for scientific research nowadays. And this is something um, I am. I would expect to increase in the next five years, although I would never make a forecast on whether this would be dominating or whether openness would dominate. I have no, no view on who will win, but uh, there's definitely something going on there. Okay, I think we, we have to close off now. One of the neat things about this platform is uh, in five years' time, we'll be able to do a retrospective analysis. You've all been filled, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll know who, uh, uh, who wins out. Uh, there are a couple, just, just one, one reflection and one really important point. One of the objectives of this platform is to have a platform where we can have robust discussions and pull out some of the key issues that we need to address as a community and as a broader community into the future. So uh, this point about doing retrospective analysis and investigating the trade-off between transparency and complexity are things that we can put on a research agenda that uh, hopefully as a community we can start to organize around and address and so on. And I think this platform provides a brilliant opportunity to do that. I wanted to quote a couple of things uh, that some of the speakers uh, said. Um, the first was Andreas, who got me a little bit uh, worried when he said, halfway through his presentation, and now we go to the nuts. And fortunately, there was a bit of a pause, but you came back and bolts of the, the nitty gritty that we had to go through. Somebody else started speaking about smart consumers, as though all previous consumers were not smart, and I worry if I were to tell my mom that I might get reprimanded. Um, but my favorite of all was uh, we want to trade ourselves with lunch. Now, I'm not too sure exactly how that is going to play out, but just to say for the uh, uh, next few minutes, we will have a lunch break. Uh, we'll come back for the second session at 13.20. I'd like to ask you all to give the uh, speakers a warm round of applause. And, uh, we'll come back.